Uh, someone tell me when I'm supposed to get my holiday shopping done because there is so much football happening. Well, how about a gift for everyone? A Saturday triple header live on NFL Network. Does that count? Sounds like football, baby. The Vikings can wrap up the division in the early game. An AFC North Classic in the afternoon. And then Bills Dolphins at night. Um, excuse me, but your girl's got game day morning on Sunday and needs to get to bed at some point. Oh, and I can't shop on Sunday. You think I want to miss the Josh McDaniels Bill Belichick embrace after the game? At least on Monday, I can give myself a gift. Oh, it's Baker Mayfield in Lambo. Are you kidding me? Game Day View presented by Mercedes-Benz starts now. Hello, what's cooking good looking? Uh, I think there was an audible like, oh no, when we uh, realized the producers have found my promo shots yes. now. This is, oh, there was no oh no by us. I we were excited. I was oh excited. no, I was the one saying oh, oh no. Got it, okay. I deserve this, this is karma. Welcome <laughs> to Game Day View everybody. Week 15, uh, Christmas has come early. We get two days on the weekend filled with football. And before we start breaking those games down, let's look at the standing, shall we? Oh. Greg, good for you. You are still in nice. the lead. Patrick, we need to talk. Uh. Okay, you shouldn't be this close to me. I don't know what is happening. I, I feel like you're you're overthinking things. That's and my not the problem. my suggestion <laughs> is you need to get back to basics. Uh -oh, okay, uh -oh. settle down and think about what you got here. We start by looking at Gisson Darren, the quarterback. He's trying to find his man Broom on the screen pass. And what's he do? He puts the ball right on the money, gives him time to get his head around and find where he needs to go, and he's going there. But he's not going far without getting blocks. Look at this. That defender's not making a tackle because number 88 has completely taken him out of the play with the pancake block, allowing Broom to sweep down the field past defenders. But look, he's got his teammates with him there to make the routes a little bit longer for the defenders to get there. And from there, speed. You can't coach that. Broom scores the touchdown. Carroll ends up losing, but they do win our play of the week. journalism we, right there. We had a lot of fabric back then. Apparently. And uh, most of it was in my jacket. Yeah. But yeah, that was all that was all shot, produced, and edited by yours truly. Well done. Was, uh, although, I don't look any although, different either. No, you not what at all. Are you, younger? About? you look younger now, I think. And two, no. Lauren, congratulations. Please keep dressing your Thank boy. You. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> I, that was quite I don't the remember suit. what the line exactly was, but you were you said something Me. like, uh, he was going after the play and <laughs> He got there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love it. We have fun on this show. Patrick, get your stuff together, okay? You shouldn't be this close to me in the standings. 12 years ago. Saturday football returns to the NFL tomorrow, and NFL Network is your home for an exclusive triple header. That's right. The Colts take on the Vikings at 1 p.m. Eastern, followed by Ravens-Browns at 4 p.m., and then... We've been talking about it all week. A huge divisional showdown in prime time as the Dolphins battle the Bills at 8 p.m. Eastern. It is a Saturday showdown triple header all day tomorrow, only on NFL Network and streaming on NFL Plus. Okay, the first game of that triple header. We got Colts. We got Vikings. Greggy, the Vikings disrespect has to stop. Only a three and a half point favorite at home against the four-win Colts. What is going on here? And that line moved towards the Colts. I think it's crazy. I'm taking the Vikings in this game. There the disrespect starts, stops here. And it's partly because of Kirk Cousins. People think they know Kirk Cousins, like he's just the same boring guy each and every week. No, I. he's one of the most streaky quarterbacks that's ever played in this league. I wrote this column called QB Index for years. And what I knew about Kirk Cousins is when he gets on a heater, he gets on a heater. And he was incredible last week. He was one of the best quarterbacks in the league, dime after dime against Detroit. And I think that was the start of something special. There Kirk you go. Cousins is going to be playing with the same amount of confidence as Patrick Claibon in a suit, two sizes, <laughs> two fits. He's going to be amazing this week. He's breaking out the grills this week, folks. Cynthia, what do you like here? I have about the same margin here, 27 to 22 in favor, again, of the Vikings. I liked the Vikings last week. I'm going to run it back here. Mm. I think this is an interesting one to see if Dalvin Cook can be kind of the guy that we saw in spurts. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't look so good. When I'm looking at Dalvin Cook, if this is going to be a team that goes deep into the playoff, they're going to need Dalvin Cook to be far more effective and efficient because when I'm looking at Dalvin Cook and I'm looking at those outside runs, it is a much different situation when you have Dalvin Cook and he's effective than when you don't. Mm. Yes. All right, let's get Dalvin to have a good game. Let's get the Vikings uh, to have a good game. A, a big win. Not a, Again, 
not as big as the jackets that I was wearing. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, we're going to be talking about that uh, all early show. Aughts. Uh, but the one thing, because we talk about respect, these are the two quarterbacks with the most fourth quarter comebacks in the entire league. And I, I don't think uh, Kirk is going to need a fourth quarter comeback in this one. Uh, 24 to 17 Vikings win because we talk about Justin Jefferson a lot and in a lot of yes, receiving statistics uh, Justin Jefferson is number one the Colts play a lot of single high uh, second in the league and again as he does in most receiving categories and press name it all yeah he leads the league in receiving yards against single high coverage uh, the Colts are going to sputter in the red zone like they have all season their touchdown percentage is 28th in the league uh, Kirk does it again and he's going to do something cringy and we're all going to laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I know the Vikings haven't been like a stylish team to like this year. They're not in, you know, like Patrick's jacket was way back when. <laughs> uh, but I'm picking them <laughs> I'm picking them this week over the Colts. The Jeff Saturday experiment has just kind of gone off the rails oh. here. Before <laughs> the bye, look at what they have had to sit and, and feel and, and really think about. The Cowboys beat them 54-19 to 19 before the bye, okay? They've just been stewing in that, and unfortunately, it's going to continue. The Vikings 24 Four to 17. They can clinch a playoff spot, their first division title since 2017, and doing it at home with a win, they're going to do it. Patrick, uh, you had to know this was coming. Yep. We tried to get you not to do it last week. Oh, yep. you've, <laughs> you, you've picked the Ravens all year, but the quarterback situation had you shooketh, uh, and you went down with the rest of us. Did the Ravens. <laughs> Look at that. I should have. That, that's the face that I made. Should have, would have, could have. The Ravens are road underdogs on Saturday. Come back to the Ravens flock, Patrick. It is okay. They forgive you. What are you going with? Yes, they, I, I hope that they do. I will take the Baltimore Ravens here 16 uh, to 14 because last week I made a mistake. I didn't consider the backup quarterback. And in this game, the backup quarterback for the opposition is better than the guy that's going to be starting for them. Ooh. And I, I'm looking back at Jacoby Brissett and what he did against the Ravens back in week seven, 22 of 27. He had 106 rating problem was he got sacked five times. Ooh. That might have been the difference. A dude that was in the offense and practicing all offseason had issues with the pressure. So how's it go this time with Amari Cooper trying to play through a core muscle injury? I, I'm, I'm just not uh, picking the Browns at this point. Give me Baltimore. Yeah, it feels good to pick against the Browns. And it feels good to pick Tyler Huntley. It feels good to pick this Ravens defense, too. Since they've added Roquan Smith, they are a different defense. I have the Ravens winning this game 19-14. to 14, And it's because of the linebackers. Like, get you a linebacker that can do it all. Roquan Smith stops the run. Nick Chubb in this running game has not been the same since Deshaun Watson took over because they have Watson and shotgun a lot, and it doesn't work. So Roquan and Patrick Queen will get you stopping the run. They're going to get you blitz. They're going to get you in coverage. I think Roquan Smith has really unlocked what Patrick Queen can do. And Deshaun Watson, since he's taken over at quarterback, is just a step slow with all of his decision making. And these linebackers are fast, so I think they're going to feast. And they're underdogs this week. That's disrespect, too. Two, two upsets so far. What do you like? I'm going to make it a third here. Mm. I have 22-21 for the Ravens. I want to talk about J.K. Dobbins now, who has returned from injury. Obviously, what do the Ravens like to do? Run the ball. Yep, run the win. ball. Win. Also win. Eat crab cakes. Kick 80-yard yep. field goal. Crab cakes in football. That's what Maryland is. Yeah, okay. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> so, look, I'm liking what I see from J.K. Dobbins. He adds an extra step. The Browns have been vulnerable to the run. I also think that scheming with Tyler Huntley means a lot of J.K. Dobbins' volume. means you're going to play him in fantasy. It means all of the runners on this team are going to be an opportunity for you to excel. I also think it means ball control because we We've seen some very weird offensive play calling on the other side. And the team that controls mm. the ball here is the team that wins. None of those heavy sets that, why are the Browns not using Nick Chubb anymore? I don't know. I can't tell you why. But I can tell you that J.K. Dobbins will eat Crazy. up the clock and the Ravens 22-21. Man, a year ago I used to look at this game on the calendar and be like, yeah, some <laughs> buckling up for this one. And now I look at it and with the injuries <laughs> and just the mess that's going on. Oh, I feel like this is going to be one of the uglier games this weekend. I'm going Ravens as well, 16-14. Wow. Meme Not... alert. Thank you, Greg's children. I thought um, I'd be all cute, like, picking an upset here and maybe get a nope. just Greg, and here we no, are. No, and I don't like to talk about this too much, but you can obviously the disconnect with Deshaun Watson. He looks like a quarterback that hasn't played football in a very long time, and I thought it was really interesting. He came out this week and said, obviously, I, I, I want to be better, but this team needs to be better as well. Don't say that. Maybe don't say that. Maybe just don't say anything because the team has been through hell trying to back you up, and now they're in this mess this season. So I am going Baltimore Ravens. I am steering clear of the Browns for the rest of the season. Okay, coming up next, we are talking Dolphins, Bills. Hey.
guys heard anything about the weather of this game? I don't know what it's supposed to be. Weather exists? Sunny? So warm? what network is Everybody it Everybody talks about, huh. it's going to be normal. I haven't warm. heard much. Football weather, Rachel. Football weather. It's the weather. The oh, weather oh, outside terrible. is weather. Ah. Make that pay. Oh, I can't wait. Talk it about this game. Go easy on it, Ken. I know. Yeah. I'm Johnson. <laughs>Excellence presented by Mercedes Benz. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait for this game, Cynthia. It was 300 degrees in Miami in week <laughs> three. Okay, we all saw them sweating on the sideline. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will be significantly colder in Buffalo on Saturday night. The Bills are seven point favorites. A, would you go to this game? Would you brave the cold? And B, uh, who do you think's winning? 100% I would go. That is like the most fun place. You you just have to like buy snow pants, get the hand warmer. You just warm. gotta accept that you're gonna be frozen. You won't be able to speak. Right. Yeah. But it's that's a fun place to go and those Bills fans, they come out in droves like this is a big game and I think they see a nice big win here. I have 28 to 19 Ooh. in this matchup in favor of the Ooh. Bills in the cold. 120 wow. degree swing, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard it. But I really want to talk about Josh Allen, specifically how his tackles line up really, really wide. Why do they do that? Because then Josh Allen can run. So when you're talking about Josh Allen's advantage and everyone's saying, well, if there's one thing about this team that needs to blah, 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 like you need to run the football with someone other than Josh. Well, if they're going to keep their tackles out wide, he's going to keep doing this, especially if they're not going to be bringing a ton of pressure. And I also think that it's an interesting note there because when they line up out wide, Spencer Brown on the right and you got Deion Dawkins on the left, it makes a big B gap, big B gap between the, the guard and the tackle. So if they are going to run, perhaps inside runs are the ones to do, and maybe that's not the best place to run on the Dolphins. So I like this, and I also think, you know, Josh Allen, a little running, maybe a little tease for later, but I, I, I'm not writing that down, but I would write down one, one touchdown for him, a rushing touchdown for him. Yeah, like you could run it with other people, but you also have a cyborg on your team. Why uh-huh. not? Yeah. I, I like a good cyber, but plus, if you run it, he's not going to, like, less of a chance of throwing an interception. You know, he does have a few interceptions this season. And I agree with Josh Allen. One thing, the most important thing that Josh Allen said this week that I appreciated uh, was that cold weather is cold. Josh Allen is Her a Californian. Cold. A scholar. It, 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 you don't get magical cold powers by being <laughs> in a place. Like, the temperature is the temperature. I'm over all of that, but as Cynthia mentioned uh, and Greg pointed out, the Bills have a giant mechanized robot playing quarterback <laughs> who can run the ball. And Sneaking out of nowhere, the Bills have a top 10 rushing offense. The Buffalo Bills Hmm. in a rushing offense that we've maligned coming into the season. They're in the top 10. The Bills can run the ball (laughs) against the Dolphins team that's going to be playing in cold weather. Yes, the cold and the temperature and and precipitation perhaps does impact the the passing game. Space heaters in LA. Well, the thing is, they were playing in Los Angeles against the team that cannot stop (laughs) anybody on the ground, Mm. and they refuse to run the ball. So basically, I I am picking them to cover, but but I do have uh, the Bills winning 21 to 8. Close win, though. I'm I'm similar. I think seven points is too much, so I have the Dolphins covering this spread, but I have the Bills winning this game, and it's because they have Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds. It's linebacker day. (laughs) <laughs> on game day view. Matt Milano <laughs> is the man. You know all the smart football guys were like, you got to take away the middle of the field against Tua. That's just like the thing right now. You know how you do that with like incredible linebackers? There's only a few of those around. Fred Warner is one of them yep. a couple weeks ago. Matt Milano's Where another one. Where did he go to school? Boston College. I knew Cynthia would like this. I remember she (laughs) shouted that out when I called him a sneaky good player, Matt Milano, four (laughs) years ago. He's not sneaky good anymore. He's an all pro, and he's really working well with Tremaine Edmonds. Their defense has been different when both of them are on the field at the same time, and they're both healthy enough to play this game. Love them this week. Uh, A couple of thoughts here. First off, thoughts and prayers to our good friend Colleen Wolf, who apparently bought herself some some electric heated pants because she's doing the (laughs) pre-show in Buffalo. Her pants 
will be the wires. They'll be heated. Okay, I so she'll that be sounds cozy. like a good time. But guess what? Smart. None of the football players will will be having this happen. I want you. I want you to see something. I want you to see Mike McDaniel before the game. I think this was at practice this week. Look at the shirt that he is wearing. I wish it were colder. Listen, I'm from Canada. Okay, if you're if you're in a group, you're with people, and and it's always the person that's like, I'm not cold. I I can wear a t-shirt out here. They're the coldest. <laughs> Okay, I, I've seen this before. I know this person. And like Cynthia mentioned, when they were at SoFi a week ago, they had heaters on their bench in Los Angeles. Uh-uh. I'm going Bills, baby. <laughs> Give me the Bills. Give me a 28-21 to 21 win for the Buffalo can, Bills. Can we pull that shirt back up? I wish it were colder. Can we pull that shirt back up? Please. Because, because I'm going to – why do they not have a nicer screen? For, like, this – Somebody get this man a I better think, shirt I think than this. He ironed it on that morning. It was definitely an iron on. <laughs> it looks like the colder, like on the side of a soda thing you yeah, get at like a, a like beverage. A, we were at, talking like, about this on my store. podcast this week. I feel like he's gonna show up in like a like a short sleeve shirt. And and flip flops on, just on because. the sideline. I want him like, I want him like Michelin man with like a thin <laughs> and we have to like figure out like is we that need to get in some of Colleen's pants. Yes. I think. Uh, I'm so excited for this game. Weather aside, it's gonna be a very good game of football. Okay, on to the next one. Lions, Jets on Sunday. Day. Uh, and I know it was a week ago and has nothing to do with this game, but can we just continue to appreciate <laughs> this by Penny Sewell? Dan Campbell, I love you. Ben Johnson is a genius. Lions forever. Even if our good friend Cynthia Freeland won't love you, Lions. Oh. I, I do love you. I will. Patrick, I'm going to start with you. I want to give Cynthia a chance to change her mind okay. here and just like sit and think about this game. So I'm going to start with you, Lions, I, Jets, who do you like? I, I appreciate that because we need Cynthia to be back uh, picking. We need line. her on board. I, I am going to pick the Lions in, in this one. I've got 22-19 win over the Jets, and that is because uh, I'm, I'm wondering if Quinnen Williams is going to play in this game, missing multiple practices this week. He was so dominant uh, in the past few weeks. Look at his performance against the Buffalo Bills. Their defense is very good, even though Greg left C.J. Mosley off of his list of linebackers that can cover up the middle. I, yeah, I feel like that's a little older. material. That's, there's a tease. Oh, oh, okay. So, but potentially, um, he has the highest pressure percentage among defensive tackles. He's got uh, uh, one of the highest run defensive grades in 2022. Mike White's beat up. This all, Cynthia, is all telling me Lions. It's just all telling me Lions. Mm. Telling me Lions, too, when I put that crown on my head at the top of the show. It's because of the Lions. <laughs> I, I've restored the roar. Picking the Lions every week oh. is like the only thing I've done well right now. I think the Lions win this game because Ben Johnson looks at the middle of the field. Patrick Claibon was talking about the linebacker and the safety position for the Jets is, I think, where you can attack. And who's great over the middle of the field? It's Amon Ra, St. Brown. Oh. It's DeAndre Swift, who looks healthy again. And C.J. Mosley's great, but you were giving me a lot of stats. Run defense, rushing the passer. I don't think he's as good in coverage. I think the Lions are faster there. And we should mention, Mike White is not playing in this game. Nope. It was 26 to 24 in my score prediction. Mm -hmm. And then I found out Zach Wilson is playing. <laughs> yep. So I like the Lions to score a lot of points. No matter who they're playing, no matter what the weather is, I do not like Zach Wilson to score a lot of points. In this game. Okay. I still have the Jets. Oh. 24 oh to 22 in this matchup. We try, guys. There's a we lot of boys available in this one, like Rookie of the Year candidates. There's some on defense, Sauce Gardner, Aiden Hutchinson. But on offense, go Give me my camera. I'm okay. talking about the Jets. <laughs> Offensive Rookie of the Year candidate, Give me my Garrett. I'm wrong. <laughs> Do you not think he's going to play well? What are we talking about here? I understand it's Zach Wilson. I understand that this seems a little bit more difficult. But I think both Bam Zonovan Knight. I don't yeah. know if the Bam. It's hard for me to say that. It just seems silly. Bam Knight. Bam Knight. Okay, Zonovan Knight. I think he's going to have a good game. When you look at this Lions defense, guess what they rank against the past? 30th. Guess what they rank against yards Those per play allowed? Those are old numbers. Those are old, seconds. crusty numbers better. used in the first month of the season. Yeah, crust. Uh, That's old time. The first month of the season was two months ago. Long time to be. <laughs> no, it's not. Justin Jefferson just scored, like, all of the yards, 223. That was a lot. That was a lot of yards. So, I think you got to look and see. Uh, I'm not sorry. I'm, I love the Lions. It's not a love. This is how you know I do love them, because even though they're losers, 
I still love him. Mm. Give me mm. my camera as an iconic. Give me yeah. my camera. <laughs> okay, well, give me my camera. I've been working with Adam Rank too long. That's <laughs> if I think. Uh, I'm going Lions here. Come on. Greg and I have enjoyed riding this team the entire season, and I will continue to do so until the end of the regular season, 27 and 21. And I want to talk about this quarterback situation. Mike White's not playing. Okay, Zach Wilson has had a weird couple of weeks. You guys remember this? What was this, two, three weeks ago? Everyone showed up wearing Mike White T-shirts for his first start. You know, Zach Wilson's on that very bus behind them. He is seeing them all wear these shirts. That is awkward and weird. And he is young and impressionable. And now he has to come back and play with this locker room who he has lost, apparently, from what we are seeing. That's going to be kind of tough to gel and mesh with these guys um, when they're probably <laughs> – who knows? They might show up wearing Mike, Mike White shirts again. That would weekend. be rude. <laughs> that would be insane. But I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, go, Lions, go. Okay, coming up after the break – we got Cowboys who were looking like, what was that about with the Texans last week? Uh, they take on the Jags. Um, do the Jags have a chance? Is this another cheese game? Hmm. The cheese. Jags always have a chance. Made us look bad last week. Yeah, they did. Don't go anywhere. We're talking this game after the break. They're very good. NFL Knockout presented by Caesar Sportsbook is a free-to-play game on NFL.com. Win an exclusive VIP trip to experience the 2023 Pro Bowl, the 2023 <laughs> NFL Draft, or Super Bowl 57 Weekly. Answer 10 questions about Sunday's games and top the leaderboard. To win a trip of a lifetime, visit NFL.com slash knockout to sign up, play, and win. Did you guys, did you guys see that guy wearing, like, the – the Lions hat thing. I feel like we, should, we should make Cynthia wear something like that next week when the Lions inevitably win. Huh? How do you feel about Great. That? Anything you need. What about a full Honolulu blue lion costume? Yeah, I mean, she listen, roar, I, like I don't lion. believe in wearing other people's jerseys, but I do have some Detroit jerseys, and I will wear one if the Lions yes! win. Yes, here we go. I have a, I have a, I have a Calvin Johnson one, and Heard I also have one purse. Bobby Lane. I got a lot, I got a lot of them. We could just do it. one per segment. Uh, okay, let's talk about this game right here below us, Greg. You are up in the picks. You've got some room to roll the dice. Take Maybe you're them. taking the Jags. I, I thought about it hard. How did you know I, I am taking the Jaguars to cover the spread I think they're gonna thread the needle Trevor Lawrence isn't fighting a fair fight here he doesn't have the running game or the defense that Dak Prescott does but he might be the better quarterback at least right now in this game Trevor Lawrence is playing so well I gotta show some incompletions I mean that's moving to the left in the pocket on oh, a dime got to Zay Jones you gotta catch that that's one of the throws of the week Trevor Lawrence oh has moments in these games, quarters at a time, where he just gets unconscious. This was a pass interference where he has about a two-inch window, and he puts it on the shoulder of the cornerback. It didn't happen, and then that touchdown to Evan Ingram. I just love the confidence he is playing with. You can hear it in his press conference. You can see it on the field when he disregarded his coach's wishes and ran a two-point conversion in by himself. They didn't know what he was doing. Trevor's just taking over. He's growing So I up. think he threads the needle and wins, or gets, keeps it close. What Love does he it. got? I said he's growing up. Oh, he is. Yeah. I have 28 to 21 in this one in favor of the Cowboys, in part because of their defense. Trevor Lawrence has been playing pretty well. He is on the injury report, though, so we do I, I expect him to play. However, it is something worth monitoring. But I really want to talk about how he's been spreading it around. So when you talk about Zay Jones, he's a good pick for fantasy. If you're desperate for a wide receiver, you talk about Evan Ingram, you talk about all of the different ways that he's been effective and efficient. That has a lot of shades of when Carson Wentz was at his best with mm. Doug Peterson, and those shades of spreading it to all of his different pass catchers, that is a huge advantage. So I think a seven-point win, so nothing too crazy. There, I understand four and a half is what it is, but I think a nice one-score win and a nice evol evolution of, you know, Trevor Lawrence's evolution is going great, and I think we see that to continue. Heck, they're still in it for the NFC South. Like, they're not out of it yet. Which is wild. Wild. Yeah. Got some teams going in the wrong direction there, of course. And then Houston uh, making it a little bit easier uh, for everybody else. In, yeah. In the division. Thanks, Houston. Houston. I have. Um, you have a problem. I have a three point, <laughs> a three point win by the Dallas Cowboys. And yes, everything that we have said today about Trevor Lawrence is absolutely true. But the Dallas Cowboys defense, it's hard to stay away uh, from just the amount of pressure. They're still leading the league in pressure percentage, although the Eagles are pushing close to that. But Trevor Lawrence under pressure this season <clears throat> his passer rating drops 38 points he's got 19 touchdowns and four picks mm. without pressure under pressure he's completing 50 percent exactly 50 percent 
of his passes. I think that's enough for Dak and company to get some points and win it by a field goal. Rachel. You know, sometimes you just get like a feeling in your gut going into the week. Ooh, is she going to do it? I'm not crazy. No. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I've actually got a gigantic oh. win uh. for the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> over the Jags. They beat up on the Colts 54 to 19 a couple of weeks ago, and then they had a really weird game against the Texans. Dak threw two picks. That's the kind of game that you go, it kind of like scares you straight. Mike McCarthy Ooh. was saying, this is a cheese game. Don't fall into this trap. We're huge favorites. And that is exactly what they did. And that's the kind of game that's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We are too close to the playoffs. We are too close to the end of the season to let this slip away and start getting messy and making mistakes. They bounce back big here against the Jags, 31 to 14. I got the Cowboys. Okay, Patrick, Titans, Chargers. Uh, is that an overly aggressive dog I hear barking? Could this be a straight on? I, I think so. If you guys didn't pick the Tennessee Titans, uh, because oh I'm God. taking the Tennessee Titans in this one, 24 to 21. And yes, it is because of the run game. And we can go back to the best Chargers performance at stopping the run all season. They held Josh Jacobs, the NFL's leading rusher, mm. uh, to 57 yards on 10 carries. Yes, that's right. In their best defensive performance against the run, they still allowed 5.7 yards per carry. Uh, the King and the Titans win here. They will run the ball, oh. unlike mm. the Miami Dolphins, who cost me a pick. I mean, let's get that stray dog a home. He's just so <laughs> angry. Yeah. So angry. Give him a shot of rabies medication. Oh, God. Uh, Greg, Eagles are nine-point favorites against the Bears. I have them winning by 21. Ooh. Are you that you brave? some big old scores this week. That seems rude. Yeah, I'm going on. I have the Eagles winning 38 to 27. I just think there's <clears> going to be a lot of points on both sides, and it'll be a good game for the Eagles to work on their run defense and also a good game to showcase how much Jalen Hurts has improved as a passer. I think you look at what he did against the Giants, and you recognize this is high-level quarterbacking. This is throwing it over the line of the defense. This is throwing with anticipation. He makes that throw under pressure before the receiver makes the uh, route, the cut in his route. Same thing right here. Devontae Smith has not made the break in his route. It's third down. Those are the plays that are keeping drives alive right now for the Eagles so that they can set up the running game. Pull shots against zone coverage. I mean... From the pocket, he is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the league. He is not a guy who throws on the run that much because he doesn't need to. He's Zero throwing MVP? dimes. He's not my MVP because <gasps> Patrick Mahomes is in the league. Why did you do that? No, I just was curious. <laughs> you made you were me say something Eagles negative. fans were going to be I was really happy negative. Until... I thought you were actually going to say yes. Like, I, I thought I was setting you. I thought I was, like, teeing up. You could spike it down. No? I just like Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> There's still time. There's still time. Okay, Cynthia Cardinals, Broncos, a game I'm sure we were very excited about when the schedules came out back in May. I'm less excited about it now. Um, <laughs> so I'll let you pick it. Go ahead. Okay, great. So um, I have 21 19 Broncos. This is an interesting one. The Brett Rippon, Colt McCoy situation is odd. But I do want to say that if you're a James Conner fantasy owner, you should still start him. Why? Because he's going to be pretty much their entire rushing attack. And the Broncos are vulnerable to the run. We've seen it. And James Conner gets in the end zone. He doesn't get enough love. This has been a weird team. This has been a weird situation. And kind of the other guys are available, meaning mm. DeAndre Hopkins. So mm. they're not going to pull those corners in. They're not going to keep the safeties in. They're, they're going to give him some space and a lighter box to work with or catch those shorter passes. So. James Conner's going to have a good game. Just, I think that the Broncos come out with the go. We got a positive out of it. Yes, there. yes. Uh, all right, coming up after the break, we are talking Giants Commanders, the rematch. Please don't tie. Please don't tie. Please don't. We don't have time <laughs> for ties. I kind of want to tie. Seven, no. five, and two. Just no. What are we get freaky. About here? Don't go anywhere. No ties. All right, it's time for quick picks. Uh, let me check my notes here. Oh, I've got the Chiefs winning by 30. Cool story, Texans. You almost beat the Cowboys, but you didn't. How out of control does this game get? Well, when I'm looking at this game, I mean, I only have 32 to 19. It's a little conservative, but since then, so no Damian Pierce, no. I mean, it's almost easier. I don't even know who's playing right. Like, the Nico Collins not playing. You know, Brandon Cook's not playing. Mm. There's a lot of people out. Derek Singley not playing. But you know who is playing? The running backs for the Kansas City Chiefs, which is why I think it's a slower-paced game, which is why it becomes a little bit closer than maybe expected because I think Jarek McKinnon, I think Isaiah Pacheco, they're going to have huge games against this very confusing defense. Mm. All right, next game we got Falcons-Saints. Greg, 
this one's for you. An awesome game in week one. Unfortunately, neither of the quarterbacks from that game will play in this one. But we will get to see Desmond Ritter, uh, which is somehow enough for you to give them the win. Yeah, what? I think it's fortunate. A little okay. just Greg action here. Come on. Falcons and Saints, best rivalry in the league. Uh, and I think Desmond Ritter's got to be an upgrade on Marcus Mariota. I think Mariota's inaccuracy and just inability to get the passing game going uh, was holding them back in this Saints team. There's a lot of bad vibes in the NFL, but I think the Saints might have the worst vibes. And there's no worse vibes than losing to your rival, Atlanta Falcons, at home. That crowd is going to be unhappy. And I think this Desmond Ritter's going to run all over them. I like this. Yeah. Uh, okay, this next one, Patrick, you're taking a lot of swings today. Yes. Yeah. Giants Commanders Part 2. We are all rolling with Washington. And you're going Giants? I am. And I haven't picked the Giants a lot this season. I was I was literally looking for a reason uh, to pick the Giants. And I hear a voice in my head that's like, hey, that D-line's playing pretty well. It was actually Greg Rosenthal's voice. And he was probably <laughs> trying to get me to make this pick. But I'm yes. inspired because he's confident enough in Desmond Ritter, sight unseen, uh, because he thinks Marcus Mariota was playing so bad. And I've just seen, watch Kayvon Thibodeau here in his last three games. He has seven quarterback hits in an overtime. Taylor Heineke and mm. Daniel Jones, for that matter, were both being hidden by their offensive coordinators. I saw something late from the Giants that makes me believe. Patrick has not picked the Commanders once this entire season. No way. That's a true Is that story. true? Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> You're standing with it. All right. You got to respect it. Uh, okay, Monday night, it is my turn. We got Rams, Packers. I think you can guess where I'm going. Listen, I might be eating my shorts on Monday, but I will not regret it. Oh, I'm going Rams 27 Canada. and 24. <laughs> Why do we do that? 27 and 24 for the Rams. Listen, there's something to be said about getting your mojo back. Stella got her groove back. Well, so did Baker Mayfield, okay? <laughs> NFC Offensive Player of the Week. I don't know if you guys just saw. He also won the Nickelodeon Player of the Week. He got slimed by his teammates. That's bonding, Greg. That is bonding. That got to pour slime all over slimed? the new quarterback's head. Do you yes. want to be slimed? No. No. <laughs> no. Like, what are you talking about here? Stay away from me bonded. with that slime. We've bonded enough, okay? We don't need <laughs> slime. Uh, uh, I love this. I might regret it, but it's just going to be a fun pick the whole way home. Go Baker Mayfield. Okay, coming up after the break, McDaniels and Belichick head to head. Who is going to win in this matchup, the Patriots or the Raiders? Um, Baker Mayfield didn't make the Raiders feel too good. Last They're walking week. in unison. Oh, cute. Look at them. Twinsies. Oh, friends. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Want to stay up to date on the playoff race? Just tell Siri, show me football standings. You wanted to pick the Raiders, I'm going to pick the Raiders. <laughs> If he picks the Patriots, do you have anything to say to Greg? Any message you want to give to him? He'll be there for him when he's crying. He's done. Yeah, he's done. we can't talk to him. I'm going to hunt you down, my guy. I don't know how you look like, but I'm going to hunt you down. I got him, fool. I got him. I already have him. It's simple. Watch yourself. And that was a fumble. No tough rule here, bro. Um, it was dangerous at the end. Yeah, it was a fun wow. time on this show Scary. for the last four seasons, but I'm going to be uh, taking a leave of absence uh, from the NFL. I'm I afraid. think I'm sorry. That, that piece would have been a lot better if the Raiders had won last week, but uh, here we are. Greg, you heard from the people. Are you going to pick with your heart here or your heart? I don't even know what my heart says yeah, anymore. No, it's just I. cold and black and broken. I'm black? picking the Raiders. There we go. Yeah, black and silver. Black. Let's do it. Uh, it's more about picking against the Patriots, yeah. though. The Patriots right now, they used to be a team that waits for other teams to make mistakes, and they just kind of win that way. Now they are that team because of Matt Patricia and their offense every oh, week. Wow. I just watch the discombobulation, the lack of communication. Like, Mac Jones is yelling at Matt Patricia, and everyone's like, yeah, Mac's right. Uh, they are missing a lot of offensive players. The, Matt Patricia's fake smiling on the sideline. Don't be fake smiling when you get delay of games and penalties and just sloppiness. I think they find a way to lose this game offensively. Raiders win 24-20. Wow. Wow. 
That was like I'm shots done. fired. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm going exactly the opposite. <laughs> Matt Patricia, you're going to win this one. <laughs> 24 <laughs> to 22. I do want to give some love to Josh Jacobs, though, in this situation. But, you know, this whole Belichick, like, I'm going to take away your best player, blah, 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 blah. You could still play him for fantasy purposes because they're going to have to devote resources to stopping Devontae Adams. So Josh Jacobs will still be good for your fantasy playoffs. I do like the opportunity that Jacobs gives them to keep the ball from being turned over. However, here's the thing. And this is, this is a big deal. They're only running the ball, and then the Patriots throw the ball, which I do think will happen more often because we saw it last week. Then that's going to change the possession. So 24-22, Patriots win this one. And this is your low-key flex because you actually like the Patriots. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't like these Patriots. No, I, I, I think you I do like the anymore. Patriots, and yeah, that's yeah. why Matt Patricia just it, caught, like, the most direct shot yeah, that we've had on you. the show. You, you get me, Patrick. There it is. Uh, I don't. Uh, honestly, well, <laughs> Who does? <laughs> it's Greg Russell. I, I've got the Raiders. I'm with Greg, Greg here. Uh, 22 to 17. Okay. And let's talk about this Patriots passing game because the Raiders have been very uh, forgiving to op opposing passing games. But just this is Mac Jones operating. Th this is what it looks like. But what do we not see, Greg, in these passes from Mac Jones or in the Patriots passing game at all? Uh, Patriots in the end zone. Yes. Mac Jones has completed one pass into the end zone all season. They've only thrown eight <laughs> passes into the end zone all season. That <laughs> stat was crazy to me. And the Giants and the Patriots stand alone. Everybody else has at least 16 attempts into the end zone. I'm not sure what's going on. But yeah, Matt Patricia, uh, be ready for, I don't know. Right, watch out for Greg. Like he's Matt Patricia out. apologist oh here. And goodness. I think he actually does watch us. So, so Matt. We love you. The girls, well, at least I love you. I don't know. Maybe I don't know who you're picking. Greg's out of there. Uh, I'm going with Patriots yep. as well. Okay. I, I really don't Patricia feel fans. confident about either side here, but I have the Patriots winning 21 to 17. That Raiders loss, I hate to keep on bringing it up, but Bill Belichick is like a shark. He smells when there is blood in the water. And with the Raiders, there is blood in the water and has been all season. Do you guys remember a couple weeks ago when Derek Carr started crying in the postgame press conference? You haven't forgiven him for it since. I, I have not because it stood out so much. The entire season I've been thinking, I think about it about once a week, okay? That is not a confident quarterback that feels good in his team and the vibes. I'm going Patriots 21 to 17. Mm. There was a lot of t trash talk talked about the Raiders this week. Kyle Brand on Good Morning Football said that they should have walked back to Las Vegas after that loss. Uh, and they've had to just sit and, and stew in that loss for a couple of uh, or a week and a half or whatever. I can't do math anymore. Uh, Cynthia, the Bengals are one of the hottest teams in football right now. And the Bucks play in Florida where it can get hot. There, there's the correlation. Thing. Uh, just probably not this week in December, mid 60s. What, it doesn't matter. What do you, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> I have the hot Bengals staying hot in the hot climate. There you go. There we go. Um, I have 25 to 22 in this matchup. There's a lot of banged up pieces on both sides of the ball here. So I am going to give some love to Chris Godwin because I do think that if Tom Brady is going to connect with any pass catcher, we've seen some really weird stuff here from Mike Evans. So I think Chris Godwin, again, I'm really trying to give you fantasy playoff advice today. That's like what my theme is apparently here. But Chris Godwin has been the sure hand here. And if there's areas to exploit with so many of these defensive pieces missing and, and banged up, that would be the one for fantasy. All right. That's the one you want. Uh, only one game we haven't hit on, and that's because it's the Panthers and the Steelers. Uh, a loss gives Mike Tomlin his first losing season ever. I am taking the Steelers. I don't want that to happen. Greg's taking the Steelers. Uh, are you taking the Steelers four weeks in a row? I'm not taking the Steelers here. Mm. I'm taking the Carolina Panthers, mm. and the reason is uh, with one win from Steve Wilkes, he can equal the season, any season of Matt Rule coaching the Carolina uh, Panthers. This is going to be his fifth win of the season after taking over when the team was <laughs> one and four and absolutely hopeless. And he's not uh, just doing it with Sam Darnold. He's doing it with a defense that over the past three games has held uh, opponents to around 15 points per game. And yes, uh, two of those offenses were bad, but they did it against Geno on the road. I've got the Panthers here. Okay, there you go. All right, coming up after the break, it is the end of the show, which means time to write this Ooh. down. Something we're feeling really confident about. I personally really like mine. Me too. Uh, and it's dedicated to Cynthia. Oh, this week. Ooh. So there you go. Oh, thank you. And if Stay you're really back. watching, Matt Patricia, still love you for 2014. We love you. Those were good times. There you go. Love that. Positive. 
Saturday football returns to the NFL tomorrow and NFL Network is your home for an exclusive triple header. The Colts take on the Vikings at 1 p.m. Eastern followed by Ravens Browns at 4 p.m. Then a huge divisional showdown in prime time as the Dolphins battle the Bills at 8 p.m. Eastern. Colleen Wolf's going to have her electric warmer <laughs> pants on. Tune in for that alone. I will. It's a Saturday showdown triple header all day tomorrow only on NFL Network and streaming on NFL Plus. And don't forget to set your lineups. It's fantasy playoffs, baby. Hey. Hey. We started a fantasy football league at the office this year. Got any plans this weekend? I don't know, somebody kicked me out of the playoffs this week, so I don't have a lot going on, you could say. <laughs> and it has gotten aggressive. <laughs> That's for not giving me Christian McCaffrey when I ask nicely. I hate this league. You know, I'm new here, so I wanted to sign up. I wanted to make some friends. You know, they punish you if you score the least amount of points. And I have scored the least amount of points every week. Uh, yeah, I'm the, uh, I'm the manager here. I'm also the commissioner of the league. I guess we'll set that meeting for Monday. Hey, are am I playing you in fantasy football this weekend? Yeah, maybe. I haven't checked. Yeah, it's probably smart to, uh, you know, HR has been called multiple times. Like, wouldn't it be crazy if you came back on Monday and you didn't have a job anymore? <laughs> yeah, I didn't care about this before, but they're going down. <laughs> Listen, there's a life after fantasy, okay? If you're in a fantasy football league with your friends, just know that you have to talk to them after all of this, okay? It is time for Write This Down. I am feeling so confident that the Lions win by, by so much this week Ooh. that Cynthia will pick the Lions the rest of the way every single okay. week. That They're just going to be so good this weekend against the Jets. She is riding with her Lions the rest of the season into the sunset, and it's going to be a beautiful thing. I like that. I'm, you listen, I look great in Honolulu blue, so yeah, I'm not going to be mad if I have to wear that. a lot of vintage stuff. Very cool. Great, right, right. let's you write this down. My write this down is about Joe Mixon. I had to do a double take looking at this number, getting over 50.5 rushing yards. 40.5. 40.5. Oh. Jack it up. I'll go 80.5. I don't care. <laughs> no Vita Vea for the Bucks. <laughs> Cynthia's taught me over the years when you're missing Vita Vea, load up on the other team. And I thought Joe Mixon looked really explosive a week ago. I know it wasn't huge numbers, but he's healthy. He's back, and the Bucks aren't very good stopping the run without Vita. Well, I'm looking at a guy who has never let me down. Never, never with oh. write this down. That's Cole Komet. He's going to catch at least four passes. You know why? Because that's all Cole Komet does. He comes down with at least four catches against the Eagles. There's a lot of missing pieces, including Darnell Mooney. Justin Fields will be running for his life. However, you know who's going to come down with the, pad, the pass? Cole Komet. Komet. That's right, Cole Komet. Yeah, the Bears' leading receiver on the season. That's it, right. It's him and then Equinemius St. Brown. Yep. Somehow they've been scoring all Cole, of these Cole, points. Cole. And I'm going to keep it with the Bears and the Eagles as well because I saw a number that was surprising to me, 48 and a half. Mm. This is points. The, the Bears have scored 22 Point. points a game Point. since the Point. bye. Point. I think Point. the Eagles are good for close to 30. <laughs> Let's get 50. Let's do it. I'm I gonna... love that. Uh, all right, guys, that is our show. Lots came out of this show. We, we saw Patrick from his humble beginnings in a gigantic suit. We had the give me my camera <laughs> moment <laughs> from Cynthia. Okay, we need to make that a sound and that needs to be in every single show for the rest of the season, okay? We, we hearing that in the back? Uh, Greg, you just- We, we learned Matt said, Patricia watches. He 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 a, a hit on Greg, like multiples. <laughs> Yeah, and right outside the building. Maybe you just shouldn't exit. Hey, get out of here. See you guys later. See you guys next week. Enjoy football.